This is an absolutely appetizing movie. Did the above scenes arouse your appetite? Leviathan from 1989 is sure to make you eat a few more bowls. The story takes place in a certain area of the Atlantic Ocean. Miners belonging to the three major ocean mining companies are wearing high-pressure diving suits to carry out silver mining operations at a depth of 5 kilometers underwater. In such a dangerous and oppressive environment, the miners have been working continuously for three months. There are only three more days to go before they finish their long day of mining, but at this crucial moment, an accident occurs. One miner accidentally slips and falls into a seabed filled with giant tube worms and loses contact with the communication room completely. Elizabeth, a colleague, jumps in after him out of concern. Unfortunately, Elizabeth doesn't see her teammate's figure. With only 20 minutes of remaining oxygen, Elizabeth must speed up the search, but as she crossed the tube worm-filled seabed, she was greeted by a rusty shipwreck. Based on the text on the hull, they discover that it is the Leviathan, a Russian passenger ship that disappeared without a trace several decades ago. Unexpectedly, it sank in this area of the sea. Despite feeling scared, Elizabeth still decides to explore inside in order to find her teammate. But when Elizabeth opens a steel door, she sees an incredibly horrifying scene, several grotesque human skeletons. Clearly, these skeletons are the crew members of this sunken ship, and from their extremely contorted appearance, it seems that something terrible happened at that time. Without time to think, Elizabeth continues her exploration. Elizabeth continues to explore the ship, but just as she turns around, she hears the cheers of her missing teammate Buzz. It seems everyone's fears were misplaced. It turns out that Buzz is here treasure hunting, and he even succeeded in finding a safe deposit box. When they safely return to the base, while scolding Buzz for his reckless behavior, everyone eagerly opens the safe deposit box. Unfortunately, there is nothing valuable inside. Only some crew members' information and a box of videotapes left by the captain. While others are not paying attention, Buzz secretly hides a bottle of 1982 vodka. Bridget, who also has a drinking problem, witnessed this, but she didn't choose to say anything. Little do they know that their actions will bring tremendous disaster to the entire base. After organizing the contents of the safe deposit box, TR, Glenn and Supervisor Steven started playing the box of videotapes. It contains a record of what Captain Russian left behind when he was alive. It turned out that a mysterious infectious disease suddenly broke out on the Leviathan before it sank, and none of the crew members survived. However, before the Russian captain could finish speaking, the steel door behind him suddenly opened, interrupting the video, based on the holes left in the ship's hull. DR. Glenn suspected that the sinking of the Leviathan was not an accident but a deliberate torpedo attack. They wondered why someone would go to such lengths to sink the ship and what exactly happened on board. DR. Glenn found the situation peculiar and felt it necessary to investigate further, but Stephen dismissed his concerns. He just wanted to focus on his job and complete the mission to go home as soon as possible. Before going to bed that night, Buzz, preparing to enjoy the vodka alone, was caught by Bridget in the act, holding a glass. Bridget indicated that she also wanted a drink, and Buzz immediately filled it for her. Little did they know that their greed for that drink would cost them their lives. The next day, Buzz's body started behaving strangely, and when he went to the infirmary for examination, he exhibited symptoms of decay. He appeared extremely distressed, and his skin was unbearably itchy. To determine the cause of the illness, TR, Glenn quickly removed a small piece of skin tissue from Buzz's neck for analysis under a microscope. The results yielded a horrifying conclusion. Buzz's body was undergoing some sort of genetic mutation. A sense of foreboding overwhelmed them. Just a few hours later, Buzz died. As soon as Steven and the miners returned to the base, TR, Glenn urgently summoned him to the infirmary to inform him of Buzz's death. Steven was utterly shocked when he saw Buzz's extensively decayed body. They wondered what kind of skin disease could possess such terrifying lethality. TR, Glenn mentioned that it was an extremely contagious virus that caused a mutation in the human body. Recalling the footage from the tape they watched earlier, TR, Glenn suspected a connection to the sunken ship, and both Buzz and Elizabeth had been there. Regardless, they couldn't announce Buzz's death to the crew, as it would cause panic, in order to prevent the spread of the virus. TR, Glenn immediately conducted examinations on the others. Fortunately, several crew members, including Elizabeth, showed no signs of similar decay symptoms. However, when it was Bridget's turn, Stephen called DR Glenn out of the room. Stephen had already informed the higher-ups about the situation and requested immediate assistance. However, Miss Martin, citing a hurricane in their area, 
postpone the scheduled assistance by 12 hours. Dr. Glenn and Stephen were frustrated but had no choice. They could only pray that nothing unexpected would happen in the next 12 hours. Unbeknownst to them, Bridget started experiencing vomiting symptoms, and Elizabeth and Justin, who arrived to help, immediately assisted her to a sickbed. Seeing Buzz lying in the ward inside an unsure Justin walks in and asks about his condition, but Buzz, who was clearly dead, was moving, since he didn't know that Buzz was dead. Justin didn't think much about it, and then he went with Elizabeth to look for Dr. Glenn. However, as soon as they left, Bridget noticed her hair starting to fall out in large quantities. Terrified, she entered the room where Buzz was. Bridget wanted to communicate with Buzz about their condition, but she witnessed an incredibly horrifying scene. Buzz's severely decayed arm was wriggling with something, realizing her fate. Bridget chose an extreme course of action, by the time the others arrived. Bridget in the bathroom had already ended her own life. Dr. Glenn had no choice but to come clean with everyone, revealing the truth of the situation. Stephen also explained the dire circumstances they were about to face. As the news of their delayed departure sank in, the crew became increasingly unsettled and agitated, facing their skepticism and discontent. Stephen did his best to calm their emotions and reassure them. However, just at that moment, a strange noise echoed from the medical room. Stephen and Dr. Glenn rushed to investigate, only to discover the horrifying sight of Buzz and Bridget's bodies fused together. The eerie scene sent shivers down their spines. To prevent further escalation, the bodies had to be dealt with immediately. They decided to place the bodies in body bags and dispose of them in the deep sea. But on the way, G.P. Cobb felt the body wriggling. The others didn't know the body had mutated and insisted on opening the bag to check it out. Only Stephen and Dr. Glenn understood the severity of the situation and were eager to dispose of the bodies. But when both sides were tugging, a shark claw suddenly came out from the body bag and scratched G.P. Cobb's chest. The unexpected turn of events shocked everyone. The mutated bodies underwent another transformation in their terrified gaze. Realizing the dire situation, Stephen and Dr. Glenn quickly dragged the body bags to the elevator platform. As Dr. Glenn pressed the button, the platform began descending slowly, watching the bodies being thrown into the depths of the sea. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. They thought it was all over, but little did they know that in the final second before the elevator closed, a tentacle that had climbed up was severed by the closing doors. The mutated creature had returned to the base, making its way with the water flow. The creature found a hidden corner and split into a lamprey-like monster, concealed from view. It was ready to attack any unsuspecting individuals. Tony, who was alone, entered the kitchen in search of food and became the monster's first target. The creature swiftly entangled Tony's arm and burrowed into his body. Tony tried to pull the creature out, but it clamped down too tightly, leaving him no chance. In his painful struggle, Tony accidentally broke through a glass door and stumbled into an adjacent room. Startling Justin, seeing the creature on Tony's body, Justin was at a loss for what to do. Faced with Tony's plea for help, Justin didn't immediately choose to save him but decided to go out and find others to assist. As he left, he made sure to close the heavy steel door behind him. However, by the time Justin brought Stephen and the others back, the several tens of meters thick steel door had already been breached and both the monster and Tony were nowhere to be found. They were just about to go and look for them when the circuitry in the base suddenly malfunctioned. Obviously it was the monster again. It seems that the monster is ready to kill them all. To prepare for the imminent danger they might encounter, they immediately made their way to the mechanical storage and each selected a tool of their liking for self-defense. In order to repair the damaged circuits, G.P. Cobb, carrying a chainsaw, entered the electrical room, unaware that he had fallen into the monster's trap. Just as G.P. Cobb was getting ready to make repairs, the monster suddenly launched an attack on him. Fortunately, Dr. Glenn arrived just in time and used the chainsaw to drive the creature back. Later, as they passed through the medical room, they discovered that all the blood bags had been consumed by the monster. All these signs indicated that the creature not only had the ability to infect and assimilate but also fed on human blood. Moreover, based on the deliberate destruction of the circuits, 
It seemed to possess a certain level of intelligence. No wonder the Russians were willing to sink their own ship at any cost. Clearly, they had also witnessed the horrors of this creature. GP Cobb suggested immediately using the escape pods to return to the surface. However, Justin argued that it would be suicidal because there was a hurricane on the surface at that moment. Even more terrifying than the monster, the escape pods would be torn apart instantly. It seemed that their only option at the moment was to confront the monster head-on. Steven plans to lure the monster to the wash tank and use the wash machine to finish it off. The crowd unanimously agreed to this proposal, and after drawing a bag of blood Steven took Justin to start setting up the trap. Unbeknownst to them, Dr. Glenn had his own plan. Quietly, he went to the communication room and sent an email to the company headquarters, detailing the events unfolding at the base. He then pressed an emergency button, sending all the escape pods up. At that moment, Dr. Glenn was well aware that allowing such a creature to escape the base would bring about catastrophic consequences for the human world, so he chose to do the same thing as the sunken ship. When he returned after completing everything, GP Cobb, who had been attacked by the monster, also started to undergo a mutation. Something was trying to crawl out of his body. Just as Dr. Glenn was about to approach GP Cobb to examine him, GP Cobb, uncontrollably, launched an attack towards him. In Dr. Glenn's horrified gaze, a small mouth full of sharp teeth emerged from the palm of GP Cobb's hand. Elizabeth, who was standing nearby, was frightened and immediately turned to run. However, as soon as she stepped out, she came face to face with the monster, she had no choice but to choose another route to escape. The monster pursued her closely from behind. This indirectly led to the failure of the traps that Stephen had carefully prepared. Fortunately, Elizabeth was rescued by Stephen and Justin during her escape. Upon learning that Dr. Glenn had met an unfortunate fate, Stephen decided to immediately board an escape pod and leave. When they arrived at the communication room, they discovered that the escape pods had already been launched by Dr. Glenn leaving behind only a message he had written on the computer. To make matters worse, the monster had already caught up to them. Helpless, Stephen had no choice but to seek assistance from Miss Martin. However, before he could say a few words, she hung up on him directly. Clearly, after receiving Dr. Glenn's message, their superiors had completely abandoned any rescue efforts. Just as they were unsure of what to do, the alarm lights in the base started flashing incessantly. It turned out that the monster had damaged the oxygen system, causing a disruption in the base's oxygen supply. If a sufficient amount of oxygen was lost, the internal pressure of the base would drop, leading to a terrifying implosion in the already high-pressure depths of the sea. Due to time constraints, they had no time to repair the supply system. They decided to make their way to the diving chamber and put on high-pressure diving suits, intending to use the inflatable buoyancy bags to escape to the surface. However, just as Justin and Elizabeth put on their diving suits, the monster caught up to them. Steven quickly attached buoyancy bags to them and pressed the elevator button to send them out first. Seeing the monster closing in on him, Steven poured a bucket of gasoline into the pool. He then grabbed a nearby weapon, preparing to confront the creature head on. But when Steven saw a familiar face on the monster's body, he instantly lost confidence and turned to run upstairs. Steven changed his tactics and started to fight with the monster. When the elevator returned, he used the iron mesh to jump down from above, quickly attaching the buoyancy bag to himself, and ignited the gasoline in the pool to buy some time. Taking advantage of the monster being blocked by the flames, Steven decisively pressed the elevator switch and hastily put on his diving suit. However, just as Steven thought he could safely leave, the elevator got stuck. With less than a minute left before the implosion, a panicked Steven continuously pounded the buttons. Finally, through his relentless efforts, the elevator started again, trapping the pursuing monster. As Steven successfully reached the depths of the sea, The base experienced a massive implosion under tremendous pressure, using the buoyancy bags. They all managed to reach the surface safely, but to their surprise, 
There was no hurricane as Ms. Martin had claimed. It was clear that she had intentionally deceived them. Fortunately, a rescue helicopter happened to be patrolling nearby, and the distress signal fired by Stephen helped the helicopter locate them, just as they were about to be rescued. The monster caught up once again. Stephen and Elizabeth quickly swam towards the helicopter, but Justin was unfortunate, getting swatted to death by the monster with a single blow. After successfully putting Elizabeth on the helicopter, Stephen didn't follow them. He took out a bomb and prepared to finish with the monster. He threw the bomb into the monster's mouth with a handsome shot. The bomb exploded instantly and blew the monster into small pieces, holding onto a safety rope. Stephen left the area with the helicopter. Later, the helicopter dropped them off at the company's drilling platform, seeing that they are still alive. Miss Martin was so surprised that she could only pretend to be happy to cover up her embarrassment. Stephen, of course, doesn't want to work for a boss like that. So he punches her in the face to teach her a lesson, and then Stephen sashayed off with Elizabeth in his arms and started living happily ever after.